The reason I'm so supportive of the blue slip, I'd like to have a say about who's going to be a district judge in South Carolina. And under the current process, I have a say. Don't have a say anymore about Court of Appeals and everything's majority vote except for the blue slip at the district court level. I've come to realize I'm probably not going to get everybody I want from South Carolina, but I'll have a say. And I'm just urging Democrats and Republicans don't lose that power. I think it's good for the judiciary to have people elected from the state having input as to who should be a lifetime federal district court judge. And the only way this works is for us to recognize when y'all win and y'all recognize when we win, things are going to be different. So I found common ground with the White House counsel who's been really pretty good to work with. On this side, to my colleagues, thank you. I know it's, it's always best to get the people you'd want to pick, but sometimes that's just not possible, and there's people from the left and the right expect you to have the same outcome as if you, if you lose the election as if you won it. They do matter, elections. And one of the things that matters about an election, Mr. Chairman, is who picks judges. So we found common ground with the White House counsel, with Judge Austin. To my colleagues on this side, yet again, thank you for working with uh, the Biden administration to the extent you can to keep the Senate intact as much as possible. And I want the Senate at the end of the day is still to be the Senate, and it's going to take working together. Senator, why don't you introduce uh, Judge Austin? It is my pleasure. Judge Austin uh, is filling the vacancy left by Judge Michelle Childs, who's on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. Impressive would be an understatement. She graduated from the University of South Carolina in 1989 with a degree in electrical engineering, which blows me away. <laughs> the reason I went to law school is you didn't have to do math. So, and sure don't have to do it being in the Senate. So, that's a very impressive start. <clears throat> she worked as a nuclear regulatory engineer at Summer Nuclear Station in South Carolina from 89 to 93 then decided to go back to law school. And that, to me, is very impressive. She clerked for Judge Matthew Perry, who's a legend in, in our state. He's the first African-American United States District Judge in South Carolina and was a true gentleman. Um, at the end of the day, she's had a successful career, not only clerking, but she was in private practice. She worked as a patent attorney in a law firm before moving over to the Wombly Carlisle Law Firm, I think that's right, close enough. She became a partner. And then she was selected to be the United States Magistrate Judge in Greenville, South Carolina, where she continues to serve. She lives in Greenville. She's happy to be in Greenville. She wants to stay in Greenville. We need judges in Greenville. And she was rated unanimously well qualified by the ABA. She has a terrific family. I think she's an outstanding choice. And I'm glad we're able to reach an agreement. And Senator Scott has returned his blue slip. So welcome to the committee. Thank you, Senator Graham. I seldom correct you, but I've learned as a plaintiff's attorney, you have to know enough math to divide by three. Yeah, I, that's where I stopped. <laughs> Next is Senator.